So now that we've learned how to do single replacement and double replacement reactions, we need to look at the other types. So predicting the other types of reactions is just really straightforward because if you look in your reference table, you can see you've got this whole set of sample reactions that you can use to predict the products based on what the chemical reaction looks like. So you'll need to look at the information that you have about your reaction, write the reactant side, and then compare it to these five types and then the little subtypes to figure out which one it is. So let's look at a practice problem. Remember the standard instructions, you're going to write the complete reaction with all the symbols. If there's no reaction, write NR and then balance with lowest whole number coefficients. So calcium hydroxide is heated strongly. So when you look at that, um, you can see that there is one reactant and that should give you a hint that the reactant is decomposing. There's only one option for that to be. So look at your reference table, see if you can figure out which one it is. All right, let's take a look. You should have looked to see that there's one for metallic hydroxides. Remember that calcium is a metal, and so it's a metallic hydroxide, and we're heating it. And if you see, the products on the right are the metal oxide plus water. So let's go ahead and write the reaction for that. Okay, so remember that we need to give the correct formula. So the formula for calcium hydroxide, calcium is a 2 plus, hydroxide is a 1 minus, so CaOH2. Now you're saying to yourself, I don't know if this is a solid, a liquid, or a gas, but you do. Think about the type of melting point that calcium hydroxide has. It is an ionic compound, so it is most likely to be a solid at room temperature. We're heating it. So remember that we need to show the little triangle over the arrow to show that it's being heated. And then the products that it's going to make are the metal oxide. Metal in this reaction is calcium. So calcium oxide, calcium is a 2 plus, oxygen is a 2 minus, so it's CaO. And then the uh, other product will be water. And then all we need to do is balance the reaction, and then we'll be finished uh, and put in our symbols. So calcium oxide is ionic. It is likely to be a solid. And water, if you're heating it, is most likely to be a gas. So let's go ahead and check for balancing. We've got one calcium here, one here two oxygens, one, two here, and then two hydrogens. So fortunately for us, this one is already balanced. All right. Remember that when you look at the formulas for the reactant and the product, don't just say CaOH. Remember to take into account with an ionic compound that its charges are important. So CaOH2 and then calcium oxide is CaO. That's a mistake that a lot of people will make. All right, let's try another one. So read the direction, the reaction here and see if you can determine which type of reaction this would be. Pause the video if you need to. So hopefully you realize that this one is a combustion reaction. Propane is a hydrocarbon, carbon and hydrogen, or carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and it's burned in oxygen, so that's the other reactant. So C3H8 plus oxygen will give you carbon dioxide and water. So let's go ahead and write that reaction. So we've got our hydrocarbon, which is C3H8. And then oxygen, remember that we write oxygen as O2. It's a diatomic molecule. And then that gives us carbon dioxide, CO2, and then H2O. I'm going to bump this down a little bit so that we can balance and everything. All right, let's put our symbols in. 
A hydrocarbon is made of carbon and hydrogen. Those are both nonmetals. It's a covalent compound. So it is most likely to be a liquid or a gas uh, in, at room temperature. So propane is actually gas. Gas or liquid would be okay uh, for this. And then oxygen, you should know, is a gas at room temperature. And then carbon dioxide, again, a covalent compound. Hopefully you realize that we breathe it out all the time, so it's a gas. And then water, and that water would typically come off as a liquid. Now, it could be liquid or gas. I will generally not penalize you if you have the wrong thing, unless we're showing that it's being heated, okay? So our next step is to balance. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Sometimes these combustion ones can be really tricky, so I usually go ahead and balance them out. So I've got three, eight, and two here, and on this side, one, two, and three. So three carbons gives me three carbons and seven oxygens. And then if I balance the hydrogen, I put uh, four, four here, and that gives me eight hydrogens, and now I have a total of six plus four, so 10 oxygens, then just a five here, and that gives me 10 oxygens here. So you can see that that one balanced pretty easily. Sometimes they can be a little tricky. So that would be the complete balanced reaction with the correct symbols. Let's try another one. All right, stop and pause the video and see if you can figure out what type of reaction this will be. Okay, let's try it. Hopefully you saw that you've got aluminum, which is one element, and bromine, which is another element. So if we add two elements together, two individual elements, that reaction is going to be a synthesis reaction. And so we're going to form a compound made of aluminum and bromine. So a metal and a nonmetal. that's an ionic compound. So we need to take into account the charges. So let's go ahead and write the reaction for that one. So in this case, aluminum, we just write by itself. It's a metal, so it's typically going to be a solid at room temperature. And then bromine, if you remember, bromine is one of our diatomic molecules. Remember Berenkelhoff? So bromine is written Br2. And if you remember by looking at the periodic table, uh, in my room, it's one of the two blue elements that are liquids, mercury and bromine. So mercury would be a liquid. And then it's going to make aluminum bromide. So aluminum will get a plus three charge. Bromine is a minus one. And so we need to make a neutral compound. So that's going to end up being AlBr3. And when you look at ionic compounds, remember they tend to have really high melting points. So at room temperature, that's likely to be a solid. Now let's go ahead and balance. Aluminum is balanced, bromine is not, and we've got that 3-2 issue. So what we want to do is get six of both. So put a three in front of the bromine, a two in front of the aluminum bromide, and then we'll need a two in front of the aluminum to complete that. All right? Try another one. All right, go ahead and pause and take a look, see if you can figure out which type of reaction this is. See if you can write it yourself, write the whole thing. All right, hopefully you saw that that was combustion, and then you probably looked at it and said, whoa, that's crazy. So let's go ahead and write it and then we'll balance it because that is a gigantic hydrocarbon. So we have C12, H22O11, sucrose, which is sugar. Hopefully you recognize that that would be a solid. Not, not all hydrocarbons are, but some are. Remember that oxygen is diatomic, so O2. And then that would be also a gas. Carbon dioxide, also a gas, and water, which would be a liquid. All right, let's balance this thing. These hydrocarbon ones sometimes are tricky, so 
carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on both sides. We've got 12 carbons. We've got 22 hydrogens and 13 oxygens. For on the right, we've got one, two, and three. One carbon, two hydrogens, three oxygens. So let's start with the carbon. We're going to put a 12 here. That gives us 12 carbons and 25 oxygens. This is already getting a little crazy. And then on the left, we've got 22 hydrogens, so we're going to need 11 waters, which is going to give us 22 hydrogens and now 24 oxygens plus 11. Holy smokes, that's going to be 35 oxygens right there. All right. So when you look at that, we need to take into account that there is oxygen in the sucrose and in the oxygen, just the molecule. So what we want to do is we want to take the total number of oxygen atoms. We do not want to change the coefficient on this sucrose. That's just going to be a mess. So what we want to do is subtract out the oxygens that we have. So we have 35 oxygens, and we want to subtract the 11 from the sucrose. That leaves us needing 24 oxygens total. So if we want 24 more, we need to put a 12 in front of this O2. And if you add that up, 12 times 2 is 24 plus 11, and that gives us 35. And that is balanced. Much easier than it looks. All right. Let's try another one. See if you can write this one. Think about what the compound might be, the product. So hopefully you realized hydrogen is an element, nitrogen is an element, and so it's going to form a binary compound. So let's go ahead. Remember that hydrogen is a diatomic molecule, so H2, and it's a gas, plus nitrogen, which is a gas. Nitrogen is also diatomic. Remember Brinkelhoff, and it's also a gas. It tells you that in the problem. Now, when you're trying to figure out what nitrogen and hydrogen would make, it's a covalent compound. So remember those valence electrons. Nitrogen has five. So think about how many hydrogens it would need to bond with. Remember that hydrogen has one. So in order to have that shared pair of a bond, it's hydrogen's going to contribute one to each place that nitrogen needs one. So that's going to form NH3 ammonia. Hopefully you remember that from our covalent nomenclature days. And ammonia typically also is a gas because it's a covalent compound. And now all we have to do is balance it. In this case, let's go ahead. We can start with the nitrogen and put a two there. Now we've got two nitrogens. And then we can just balance the hydrogen by putting a three. All right, let's try another one. We need lots of practice at these. All right, take a look at this one. See if you can figure it out. So hopefully you recognize that there is one reactant, meaning that this is a decomposition. And once you realize it's decomposition, check all the special ones underneath the little sub types. And this is a metallic chlorate. Magnesium is a metal. So remember that in order to write the formula for that, we've got to take into account the charges on our, uh, on our ions. So magnesium is a 2 plus. Chlorate is a 1 minus. And so magnesium chloride is MgClO3 with a 2, so that it's a neutral compound. And it is ionic, so it's likely to be a solid. And then when we say that it is heated strongly, don't forget to put the delta. All right? And then we know our products are going to be the metal chloride, so magnesium is a plus 2. Chloride is a minus 1, so it's going to be Mg. Cl2, and our other product will be oxygen. Magnesium chloride is ionic, so it is going to be a solid at room temperature, and hopefully you remember that oxygen is a gas. And then we just need to balance. Now the magnesium is balanced, the chlorine is balanced, the only thing that's not is the oxygen, and all we have to do to balance that is put a three there. Okay, let's try another one. 
take a look at this and see if you can figure out what type of reaction it is and what the uh, products are. Try to write the entire reaction. So looking at this one, you can see that this is decomposition, sodium hydrogen carbonate, so it's a metal hydrogen carbonate. And so, so hydrogen carbonate is one of your polyatomic ions. Sodium's a plus one, and hydrogen carbonate is a minus one. So it's NaHCO3. And again, it's an ionic compound, so it's a solid. It's heated, so it gets the triangle. And then when we look at your yellow packet, the products there are sodium carbonate, so carbonate's a 2 minus, Na is a 1 plus, so it's Na2CO3. And then the other products are water and carbon dioxide. Okay? If you haven't already balanced it, give it a try. It's not as bad as it looks. So all we, we need, need to balance now is let's try the sodium. Everything's kind of out of whack. But if we balance the sodium, You've got two Na's, two H's, two carbons, so one here and one here, and six oxygens, three here, four, five, six. So that's nice and balanced. We need to make sure we get our symbols in. So sodium carbonate is a, an ionic compound. It would be a solid. The water is being heated, so you would expect it to be a gas. And of course, carbon dioxide being a covalent compound with a low melting point, it would also be a gas. Come into class. We're going to do lots of practice on this and make sure everybody knows what they're doing. See you in class.